In today's episode, the amazing Maya Ford and Cynthia Washington will be interviewing Mr. Ryan Dunn of the Basement Company. Thank you, guys. by Kennel Hunter, Noah Jackson, and myself, Brooke Smith. Hi, my name is Noah Jackson, and first of all, how are you today, um, doing, Mr. Doing well. Daniel? Uh, doing Delhi. well. Delhi. Oh, I'm sorry. Doing well. Oh, that's Happy very to be great. here. <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear that, and my first question is, have you ever sold a house that you built before? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. uh, um, yeah, I've uh, I've designed homes and so and turned around and sold them. That's a <clears throat> that's another part of what we were talking about earlier. That's another part of um, living in this gig society. I'm doing several things with one degree. That's a very good uh, place of income because you can you can uh because you basically your own boss technically yeah. yeah so moving on to my next question have you ever been discriminated uh because of your color in your um in your uh in your job as yeah. an well what would not be a good question uh, what normally happens is uh, the discrimination is very subtle. It's never, it's it's never. Oh, uh, you know, we don't want you because you're black or whatever. It's normally, you know, hey, I can't use you today, but uh, thank you for your time. And so I'll come and in interview for a job, and then that's you know, instead of uh, uh, them saying I can't stand you, they'll just say you know, thank you very much, and you know, you just don't get it. But uh, but in, in everything, it may not, it's, it's not always about the, the being concerned about being uh, discriminated against. We have to create our, um, we have to create our own opportunities. And like, for instance, one of my favorite architects, and you guys can look him up, his name is Paul Revere Williams. Paul Revere Williams was an African-American architect. And what, and he worked back in, in the, 1930s and 40s. The, now the the, uh, the 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 discrimination was real, and it was <laughs> and it was serious. And this man was one of the most prolific architects in America. Um, he during a time uh, in which they wouldn't even want to shake his hand, he was designing buildings for them. He was designing buildings for in areas in which he couldn't even live in. And, uh, but he still thrive, he still found a way to win. And my thing for all of you is, you know, always find a way to win. There's no, discrimination is no, ex, you know, that, that's no excuse. I will find a way to win. That's why I do several different types of, uh, of architecture. I don't just do one thing. A lot of, a lot of architects will only design for others and not build themselves and sell. I do it all. Well, that was a great answer because black people are very powerful and yes. they shouldn't worry about being discriminated in the, in the country because our skin are very, is very powerful. It shows a very powerful history. So my fi final and last question is, um, what is the challenges of you growing up and did you always want to be an architect? 
It's kind of did. <laughs> I didn't know what it was called. I just said, like, "Hey, let's." I, I'd like to. Um, I like to draw and I like to design things when I was a kid. And, and uh, but as when I got older, what I did was to laugh. My father has restaurants um, and, and airports. But when I was a kid, um, you know, I didn't know what it was. It's just it's a, a way for me to make some extra money. And so what I would do is during the um, during the summertime, I would go and work in the restaurants. And but a whole time I, I thought, well, well, yeah, I'm gonna do what my dad does. But then I had this love for what I did. So when I went to school, um, the education was based on architecture. But when after you get um, af after I, I I graduated, I went and worked with my father. And uh, and then I decided, you know what? This is a young man's game. <laughs> Let me get going and do and fall back on my education and, get, and, and work. And it was it was awesome. It has been great. Well, that thank you for answering my questions, and we'll be moving on to Kendall. Okay. Hi, Kendall. I have a couple of questions. Okay, sure. What kind of projects were you doing when you first started as an architect? First project was just um, uh, what do you call it? renovations. Mm -hmm. uh, going into an existing home that may have been um, 1,100 square feet or 900 square feet, expanding, take going, and the first things that we did was stay within the four walls and just move walls around and make and improve a building simply by move opening up walls and adding different things to make it a a bigger place it's funny i can take the same 900 square feet and rearrange it in a way that you'll feel like man this is like 1500 square feet it, bigger bedrooms everything and then like, how were you able to do that and but you know they're, they're tricks of the trade <laughs> that you can use and make things a little different. But that was a great question. What is your inspiration for all of your projects? Hmm. My inspiration, I'm huge, huge, huge into God. And I like to use, um, I like to use, um, okay, there, are, I don't want to get too heavy into it, but there are, um, there, there's this, uh, if you want to look it up, it's called the, um, the golden ratio. There's a ratio that that God used in order that God uses in order to design us, in order to design plants, in order to design everything. And so I use that ratio in uh, in designing buildings. So the size of a room in relations to other rooms that you guys call it proportion, uh, proportion and scale is really important stuff. What does that mean? If I, it, let, let's describe um, scale or proportion. You have a room that's, let's say 11 foot by 11 foot. That's a great size room. But if I have a bed that's 10 foot by 10 foot in that room, you can't walk around it. It's a horrible design. <laughs> so you could you can change things by changing the proportion of the bed. And then all of a sudden that, that 11 by 11 room is really the size that it should be, a great size room. And so um, proportion and scale is really important. And that's why I use um, the golden ratio. Take a look at it, it's called phi or uh, the golden ratio or uh, the golden mean. Uh, take a look at it. It's, it's a really, really fascinating um, um, bit of, of science, but also it's just basically science. Well, what science does is, is uh, try to understand how God did things. That's the way I look at it as a Christian. I think that's wonderful that you use God as an inspiration to build things and create new jobs and everything for a lot, a lot of other people. Yeah. Um, how important is an innovative mind in your line of work? It's, it's really important. Um, ha, uh, if you don't have, if you just want to do cookie cutter stuff, you're going to get bored of this job real fast. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, people will people will not hire you, hire you as much either because your solutions are stale. <laughs> your, your, your solutions are are just you know cookie cutter. I can go anywhere and find a, a craftsman style home. I can go anywhere and do normal things. It's like, uh, for instance, um, that's the reason why people don't want to drive uh, 1999 cars anymore. Besides them, them being older, it's like the style is out, and I want to see. I want to go for that 2020 thing or that 2021 thing, and it's important to stay on the cusp of what's what's hot, and also what how people are living. Uh, uh, Frank Lloyd Wright once said, "In order for an architect to be a great architect, they've got you've got to be clairvoyant." And basically, what he's saying is that you've got to understand how you've got to understand uh, how people are thinking. And once you 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 plug into how people are thinking, then you start changing the way you design. For instance, for instance, we've got the COVID situation that's going on now. And if some people think some there are schools of thought, thought and we're all out here thinking, OK, how do we do this? How do we design so that we can uh, keep people safe and also keep and and also um, make sure that the design is still aesthetically pleasing or still pretty? So one of the things that, that you know, uh, the one school of thought is, hey, we've had other pandemics before. And in these pandemics that we've had before, how did we handle them? Have, has the architecture changed because of the pandemics? And w- yeah, initially for the first, however long it took, first year or two that it took to, to get over the, pan- the pandemic or the illness or what have you until a cure was found, you know, things changed, but then after the cure was found, and we went right back to the same old ways that we did things because uh, humans like the same type, you know, we are comfortable in certain spaces. We don't like dark, we don't like cold, we don't like shallow uh, ceilings, we like, you know, tall and airy and bright and pretty. And so as a, as a hopefully I'm, I answered your question because I, I will uh, go off. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you for answering my questions. Um, now on to Brooke. Okay. Hi. Um, Mr. Daly. Yeah. So, as you already know, we're going to uh, go over a few questions. So, I'm going to just jump straight in. Um, are you having a good day before I start? Good, have How a you- great day. I'm able to hang out with you guys, so I'm having a great day. Um. So, my first question is, ooh, I'm sorry. Rich Dad, have you are you familiar with the book Rich Dad Poor Dad? Yes, I am. Very. So I heard you like speaking earlier, and I was listening, and I heard you talk, speak about how fulfilling it is to work a job that you love and do something that you love. Um, and in Rich Dad Poor Dad, it speaks about the rat race and how people they work a job they hate and they get their paycheck, they pay their bills, they're look they're looking at what's left and they still are hating their job, they're not happy, and they're just running the rat race for their yeah. entire life. Yeah. So to have a fulfilling job, could you go more into how that makes you feel and how your surroundings around mm-hmm. having that type of job has changed compared to having a job that you would yeah, hate? That's a, Brooke, that's an awesome question. I think that um, most people don't even think about it. You don't think about um, what it is. Okay, as a, okay, I'm sorry. No matter where I go, I'm a Christian and I talk about it. One, um, one of the things that I believe, I wholeheartedly believe, we are given gifts. The gifts that we are given are not the same. Kindle has a different gift then Noah. Noah has a different gift than Brooke. Brooke has a different gift than Isaiah. None of these gifts are just because I have different gifts, just because Kendall's gift makes her more money does not make her gift better than my gift. As long as I'm fulfilled in what I'm doing, then that's, that's what, you know, that's, that's the most important part. If I can plug into the gift that God gave me 
and make a living on it? <laughs> you never work a day in your life. Life is great. No matter how much money you're making, it, life would be great. So it's not, okay, I can't say that it's not about making money because we all have to eat and we all have to raise our families and, and take care of things. But man, if I can make a decent living and, and making sure that I'm not harming others and I'm, also, I'm not a cancer on society um, and, and I can help others and also plug into what God gave me, and one of the things that it, one of the things that people don't realize is that that thing that there's a term familiar familiarity breeds contempt, and what that means is that that thing that you're used to all the time you get a little sick of it, and being familiar like for instance, um, you may you may do something better than other people, but you think of, ah, everybody can do that. No, everybody can't do that. Hone in on that thing. That thing that you think that, that you, you know, we give up, uh, um, as a, especially on my side of life. You know, I, I look back and go, man, you know, uh, I've known people with great gifts, but they didn't really, they never really believed in themselves. They didn't have a Miss Nikki to say, hey, you know, you can do certain things. I'm sitting here, all this positivity. I'm, 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 when I first got on here, I'm like, man, I wish I had a Miss Nikki. <laughs> because it's awesome. Someone who's telling you that, hey guys, we can do whatever we want and, and we can strive towards it. Let me, let me introduce you to some people who have done it. My father, I was blessed enough to have a father who, who you know, just through osmosis hanging out with him, uh, you, I could meet millionaires who are doing different things. And I started seeing what the, what the common thread is between all these millionaires. You're speaking to them and you're talking to them. One of the common threads that you see through them is one, discipline. They're, it's discipline on accident. These people, are, they're just, they're, they're born that way. When it comes to discipline, that you know, if, if you're stepping out, they're going to be pulling you back in. Hey, no, 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 no. Get back over here. This is where we go. This is how we do things. And I had those, these, all these men who were kind enough to pour into me and to, and to, you know, let me know why that. And I would ask them crazy things like, what's your favorite book? What, uh, what do you, what do you read? What do you do? I start, you know, because if you read, the, have you ever uh, read the book by Napoleon Hill, uh, Think and Grow Rich? If you don't read, if you don't get a chance to read many books, read that book. What happens is he talks about, like Rich Dad, Poor Dad talks about, he talks about the, uh, what, what was some of the, um, what was some of the, the common things that you see through all these rich people's lives? And Napoleon Hill went through it and it took him, I forget how many years, like maybe 20 years, I, I, I don't remember. You have to um, check, I'll go back and check the book. But he was able to, after, after going through all this time, seeing, uh, seeing all the habits of all of these people, he, saw, he started seeing, oh, wait a minute, there's a common thread. And the common thread was discipline. The common thread was being thankful for what you had giving back uh, out of, your, out of the, 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 the gift that God gave you, giving back to, to others and helping others. Have you talked, a rich dad, poor dad talks about when he started, his rich dad saw that when he wasn't doing well, he would always find somebody to give somewhere and someone to give to. Uh, I remember uh, that struck me uh, at, at that time. I had not read um, Think and Grow Rich, but, uh, but I listened to that. It's like, well, that's, that sounds wise. Um, I'll, I'll, adapt, I'll adopt that into my, um, you know, what I do. Again, I'm really good at digressing. So <laughs> let me, if I can come back and, and, and hopefully I've answered your question. Yeah, I completely understand, like, pretty much everything that you said um, when it comes to curiosity, when it comes to reading, and the the blessings that you receive, the gifts that you're um, 
oh, excuse me, blessed with. And uh, common times, oftentimes we see in like social media, media, anywhere, um, we see one hit wonders. People who they were awesome. They made a great song. Like, I don't know. They made a great song. They made a great movie. Then they made a great book and they never try to do anything else off of that. Like yeah. if I come out with a song, I'm coming out with t-shirts, a business <laughs> I'm coming out with a great song, how to get, find a great studio. Like we got to work and you bask in the glory for too long. And like you were speaking about, knowing where you come from realize that this is all right this is good keep on working and just yeah that's like something that's really important so i'm gonna move on to my second question so um as all creative things do have there's always an umbrella like from art there's painting landscape to painting people and painting noses painting lips um for architecture there's interior decorating building all these different things mowing, even mowing the lawn um so with could you kind of speak on the umbrella of architecture a little bit more and how you could make multiple streams of income from staying in one singular um branch of business which would be architecture um uh, you, you touched upon that that that's so that's so true one of the things that people don't realize is that um, design is in every design is in every aspect of our lives, and we don't realize that from the clothes that you're wearing, the clothes that you're wearing was designed some, by someone. The meals that you that you eat are designed by someone. The um, the higher forms of art that we uh, that we experience, they call it what do they call it, haute couture or uh, I just call it uh, fancy, <laughs> fancy uh, uh, French clothing. But um, all of these different things from, from um, designing of clothing, from, from these chefs who design um, these crazy uh, gastronomy meals that are, are made with, with meals cooked with hot ice, you know, <laughs> crazy stuff like that. Um, in, addition, in addition to that, but the, the single stream through the whole thing is design. And most, if you, most of the great architects that you would go back and read on and, and, and study, they, they didn't only just stick to architecture. Uh, one of the most famous architects was Frank Lloyd Wright. And what he did was he not only did architecture, but he designed the furniture for the homes. He designed the drapes for the homes. He designed systems for the homes. Like for instance, he took, he borrowed, he borrowed a lot. He borrowed from um, Asian architecture a lot, but what he, what, one of the things he did was, you know how we have now, we have heated floors. What he did was from the Japanese culture, they have something where underneath the house, they start fires at night. And those fires that were started were, were little, little small fires at night. And the, the heat, what they had, um, they had uh, corridors underneath the house where the heat would, would go to and it would heat up the bottom of the house and make the, house, the whole house warm. But it wasn't a very good way uh, to, to heat the home. So what uh, Mr. Wright did was he took the idea and he, um, he refined it. He put inside of the concrete floors that he used to uh, have for all of his homes. What he did was he put copper piping in the floors. And then he had a, a, a hot water heater that was hooked up to the, pot, the piping system. And so they call that gravity heating. And so what happens is um, this idea that he refined from, that he refined from Japanese culture, he took that and he started putting it into his homes. And uh, this gravity heating is what we see that, that is being used today. He designed that in 1920. And we're just now starting to, on, we're on the cusp of using that now in our designs. People in, in these really expensive homes are putting this gravity heating in their homes, but now it's evolved from having um, the copper piping in the floor. Now it's more of a, um, they have uh, uh, elements in the, in the uh, floor that you can roll out on a, on a um, 
almost like a sheet and then hook up the electrodes to it and then it heats up the floor with a with a almost like a thermostat that that uh, controls the um the temperature in a room and um, so i to to answer your question brooke the common thread through everything is uh, through everything is art but in addition to that, it's understanding each or each discipline. There's a discipline in, in, in uh, that that runs through everything. Like for instance, in art, when you look at a painting, a painting has scale, so does architecture. A painting has a, a rough texture or a different medium, so does architecture. There are different mediums that you can build in and it'll give you a different aesthetic or a different look. Um, they're different. Uh, they are the same. When you look in the terms that are used for art, you will see them used throughout every discipline, meaning food, clothing, um, uh, sculpture. Um, every all of it is is pretty much the same. So I said all of that just to say it's the same discipline that flows through them all. A creative person who doesn't close their mind off and just stay in one genre can be successful in many genres. And in addition to that, that's the reason why I, I design and flip homes. I design for other people. I design and build homes for other people. I do different things with that same, with, with the same degree. Yeah. Um, again, I am like, that's, in so many words, like you explain so much wisdom that people okay. they they wouldn't commonly think about when they're they think architecture, they're thinking Bob the Builder, the cartoon, yeah. uh, like yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and also speaking on seeing someone's idea and thinking, oh, how can I tweak this and make it my own, where I'm not being a a copycat, maybe right. like. <laughs> Like this alarm clock, like someone saw it, they said, right. It doesn't have a digital screen. So they added a digital screen onto it. Like that's super like dope. Yeah, I, agree. <laughs> and I agree. Also like another thing, like you spoke, you spoke on ideas that have been created like years ago and they're yes. just now used. Like in Egypt, they, we were able to create mummies and like, we're looking in these tombs and there's still skin on them like that's super awesome like we knowledge is like power <laughs> knowledge. Oh. knowledge is extremely powerful and i have one more question to close out and so right now with the pandemic going on so we're going to speak on some current current events with the pandemic going on how do you feel that your job has been affected? Um, through the grace of God, my business has flourished because uh, people are still building. What, what's going on is that we've got uh, situations, uh, we've got situations where um, uh, the cost of money, okay, that's, people look at, uh, at they say, how, what's the interest rate on, on loans nowadays? And so that interest rate, if it's higher, the cost to borrow money is greater. Right now, the cost to borrow money is lower. And so as a result, these people are like, look, I know it's, it's getting ready to go crazy around here. So let me go ahead and hurry up and, and build this, this property that I want or buy this house that I want or, or, and redesign it. It's happening. I'm I'm staying pretty busy because of that, and it's only by the grace of God that I'm uh, that you know because it, they don't have to come to me. They can go any to anyone and do that. But I try to be innovative. I try to be creative. I try to offer my uh, customers or clients um, a, a different service that hope that they wouldn't you know that you would get from other people, but. I try to stick in there and then give them additional information that, that they, they probably wouldn't have, um, that, they, that they wouldn't get from other people. The other people would just simply design it and leave, but I try to stick around and, and answer questions and, and help them with different things to, to, to make their project a success. Yeah, I completely understand what you're saying because 
you want to be like you want to be like um you want to leave someone wanting more like yeah that was the dopest experience that was the best experience i ever had with anything to do with architecture to any with like that was the best experience i had it was super awesome so that's always like a feeling that you want to leave your customers with because it is fulfilling like you spoke on it's fulfilling to feel that this is my work and this is my work and my work is making someone happy it's making someone feel good like even though i'm not there they're waking up every morning saying oh i love this house i love my house so um I so we're gonna so. <laughs> So high business minds, we we just interviewed Mr. Mr. Daly and we spoke on several different topics. He was in he was interviewed by Kendall by Kendall Hunter, Kendall Kendall Hunter, Noah Jackson, and Brooke Smith. We spoke on several different topics about um about his field of work, architecture. Um, we had a super dope interview. We learned so much stuff about all the different parts that go into architecture, all the things that people don't see and they don't think about. So it's a super dope, uh, super dope interview. Thank you, Mr. Warren Daly, for your time. Thank and you, guys. Thank you. Uh, it's, a, it's been a pleasure. It's a, been a pleasure to be here, and I'm, I'm actually. Uh, invigorated to be around such young people are so smart and so young <laughs> you guys are and also you guys are so blessed to have this Nikki I'm telling you you really are yeah it's a <laughs> thank you uh, so we're gonna wrap okay oh great I'm glad you know, one of the, the things that I want you all, we touched upon something and that was uh, discrimination. And I wanted to leave you with parting words regarding that. Um, my father would, whenever we would talk about a situation and, uh, and there may have been discrimination in the situation, my father would, all, would always say, look, you don't know that man. You don't know what he's thinking. He could just be a jerk. You don't, don't automatically to size it up to discrimination you we are going to find a way to win that's the most important part we take care of our our, our we take care of our families in, in that way i want you all if, if i could impart anything to you understand that your your ability to be successful lies within everything that you read you see the examples around you you have a lot of great examples around you. Pay attention. Never give up. Always find, uh, if, if this avenue is closed, open up another door and find a different way to win. You will, you will be successful. You just, you're going through something. You may be going through a situation right then, but that's okay. You just hang in there. You be patient. You do the right thing. You, you look for opportunities and you seize upon those opportunities. Consistently read and stay ahead of every curve. Meaning when you start read, if you're in a, a certain discipline, let's say you're, you're an attorney, let's say you're anything. If you don't start, if you don't keep reading on what you're doing and seeing what's happening, or if you're in finance, if you don't know the different uh, vehicles or they call them vehicles, the different different and the different types of loans that there are out there for businesses or the different uh, types of uh, like AI that people are using in order to incorporate into their businesses in order to make them successful. If you're not out there reading and trying to understand or learn what's happening, because if you're, you're going to run into problems and you're, and you're going to be like, well, why, what's happening? Why is this, you know, why am I having such a hard time? Maybe it's discrimination. No, no, no. It, you need to look and say, okay, what do I need to do in order to be successful in this situation? Forget about this person. No one's going to be in my way. I'm going to continue to study and I'm going to be, I'm going to continue to work as hard as I can to achieve my goal. And I will find a way to win.
Awesome. Love it. Watching Business Minds Kids, where we train the kings and queens of the future.